Hello, this is Steph. Today we're going to see FMPEG 7.1. FMPEG 7.1 has just been released, so we're going to see the new features, the new stuff, and uh, we're going to see what's new for us given by the FMPEG developers. So now we have Windows behind, but we can do it on Linux also. And so enough talk, let's get started. Okay, so first thing, let's get started with the release, with the uh, presentation of the release itself. And we are at uh, fmpack.org. So we have uh, the latest news that says uh, September the 13th, uh, 2024. FMPAC 7.1 Peter. FMPAC 7.1 Peter, a new major release is now available. A full list of changes can be found in the release change log. So we open the change log for later. The more important highlights of the release that are the VVC decoder. So this is something that was experimental. Also in the, ah, it's written also here. It was in the previous version and has, uh, uh, has had enough time to mature and be optimized enough to be declared as stable. So that it was experimental before and now they made it better. So good for it. Let's see how promising can be the VVC. And when I've seen the uh, work that I'm doing, so I left off with H.264, and now we came back. I came back uh, working more intensely to it, and now I see more H.265 around. Now maybe in the future it'll be H.266. Who knows? The codec is starting to gain traction with broadcast standardization bodies. Support has been added for a native AAC USAC part of the HEAAC uh, coding system decoder with a format starting to be adopted by streaming websites due to its extensive volume normalization metadata. MVHEVC decoding is now supported. This is a stereoscopic coding tool that began to be shipped and generated by its recent phones and VR headsets. So it's cool. So remember i did a video about the 360 videos and stereoscopy videos and maybe this is added to the bin of this kind of videos then uh, we have uh, the support for vulcan encoding oh sorry i missed the line so lcevc decoding an enhancement metadata layer to attempt to improve the quality of codecs is now supported via an external library. Support for Vulkan encoding with H.264 and HEVC was merged. Uh, this finally allows fully Vulkan-based decode filter encode pipelines by having a sync for Vulkan frames other than downloading or displaying them. The encoders have features parity uh, with their VAAPI implementation counterparts, Chronox, uh, was announced has announced that uh, support for AV1 encoding is also coming soon to Vulkan, and FMPEG is aiming to have day one support. So remember, we talked about Vulkan, and uh, Vulkan is to support the 3D graphics, so across platform 3D graphics. Let's see also the Wikipedia. It's a low-level, low-overhead cross-platform API and open standard for 3D graphics and computing. It was intended to address the shortcomings of OpenGL and allow developers to more, con uh, more control over the GPU. And uh, in addition to the above, this release has had two has had a lot of important internal work done. By far, the standout internally are the improvements made for full range images. So this is a, a problem that uh, we also encounter while uh, working that is uh, between the limited and the full range. Sometimes FMPEG misinterprets what the data inside, what is this thing? So when you have uh, uh, the range from zero to 55, uh, so the full range that we usually intend to uh, to use for our videos for our images sometimes are not like so they are a bit reduced and this reduction is usually misinterpreted with be, within the uh, the video files so sometimes this thing is not 
uh, as intended. So now uh, seems that they worked a bit better with it. Previously, color change data had two paths, no negotiation, and was reliably forwarded to filters, encoders, mooksers. Work on cleaning the system up started uh, more than 10 years ago. However, this stalled due to how fragile the system was and that breaking behavior would be unacceptable. The new system fixes this, so now color range is forwarded correctly and consistently everywhere needed and also laid the path for more advanced form of negotiation. Cropping metadata is now supported with Matroshka and MP4 formats. This metadata is important not only for archival, but also with AV1, as hardware encoders require its signaling due to the codec not natively supporting one. As usually, we recommend that users, distributors, and system integrators to upgrade unless they use current Git master. So in fact, usually you need to update your software, FFA included, Good, and uh, so just a word about uh, the um, so the change log that we didn't check before. So this is uh, all related to 7.1. So raw caption with time, close caption the mixer, LC3, LC3 plus decoding and coding using external library libLC3. So FMPEG CLI filter graph chaining. So now they are improving more and more. So how the filter graph is implemented within um, the, the software. So good. So I hope they will be more efficient from time to time. LC3, LC3 plus, the Muxer and Muxer. And uh, PAD, VA API, Dropbox, VA API filters. We have scale support secondary. So there's a lot of uh, codecs, decoding and encoding uh, available. So, and there's uh, now the, uh, so there's still a written here, VVC decoder compatible with DVB test content, XHE AAC decoder, remove the alpha DSPN support code, VVC encoding support via uh, lib VV ENC. And uh, uh, we have the support secondary ref input and frame stick options for VF scale. VF scale to ref deprecated. Then uh, we have the HEVC via D3, D12, VA. So dark, sh um, yeah, dark show. Dark show? Dark to 3D, sorry. Uh, cropping metadata parsing and writing in Matroshka, as said before. Intel QSV accelerated VVC decoding, cool. Media codec AAC, AMR, AMR and VAMR, WB, MP3 decoding. And uh, you see that uh, YUV color space negotiation for codecs and filters, obsoleting the UVJ pixel format. So there was U YUV and YUVJ. YUV is uh, with a limited range, YUVJ was a uh, full range, and I guess that uh, removed the, um, for the UVJ out. Vulcan, H.264 and H.265 encoder. And then uh, stream specifiers in FF tools that can now match by stream disposition. LCEVC enhancement data, LCEVC filter, MVHEVC decoding. So quite a bit of stuff, mostly related to the codex um, implementation, both hardware and software. A few deprecations, a few good ones. So like this, that uh, may give a bit of problems, especially if you want exactly the right pixels of your uh, of your image, of your video. And uh, a bit of deprecation of filters and some improvement about this. So uh, there's also the website of uh, uh, Kempf, Jean-Baptiste Kempf, Jean-Baptiste Kempf, 
that is one of the main developers of the, the VLC project. And uh, but now I saw that it was a down the website. And so probably a lot of people were addressing there, and so they limited the bandwidth. But this morning it was uh, available, announcing a bit more about uh, the new thing um, about the FMPEG 7.1. He said that uh, 7.1 is considered uh, an LTS, so a long-term support. Uh, the previous one was a 5.1. And uh, now it will be the next uh, long-term support. So it's a good one, and uh, I'm glad for that. Cool. Okay, so here we test the H266 encoder and decoder. So first the decoder, then the encoder of uh, the VVC uh, versatile video codec uh, available in FMPEG 7.1. First of all, let's check that we have uh, FMPEG correctly installed and here we have the John version 7.1 good and now it's time to put an FF play on uh, this video this video is uh, an old video a video that I already showed you in the past just to show you that it's still working and here we have uh, the video correctly decoded and now let's try to encode another video so I have uh, the Big Buck Bunny always demo that I use and uh, it is available right here the video I'm referring to is this Usually the same, with the same scene. And now what we are doing is uh, taking the video that we had before as input, trying to encode it using the VVC tag. Then uh, we put uh, CA in uh, uh, as audio, uh, we put a copy. So we don't want to encode uh, the audio furthermore. And uh, we put everything in this uh, folder and uh, we call it Big Buck Bunny BBC, let's say, dot mp4. Uh, so I tried with uh, MKV, doesn't work. We tried with mp4, uh, since we have already an mp4, it should work. Okay, so now the file is ready. We are trying to play it. So here we go. And here we go. So the video has been correctly decoded. We didn't set any options. We didn't set anything about uh, the encoding quality and uh, so anything like that. But anyway, with the default options, it seems good. Good. Okay, so now we'd like to talk a bit about uh, the Vulkan encoding in H.264 and H.265. And uh, it is uh, a way to provide a common standard across platform API for uh, 3D graphics computing. So it rather than using the uh, proper uh, encoders and decoders for the different uh, video cards. So you can use Vulkan on top of it, overhead using the native or using the Vulkan shouldn't make uh, so much difference. You need uh, the driver support. So in fact, uh, for example, for NVIDIA, I have an NVIDIA card. You need uh, the Vulkan driver support. And uh, so I don't, I didn't download it. So in fact, uh, if I execute the command that essentially writes the file into a new uh, file uh, using the H.264 Vulkan uh, codec, uh, it doesn't work. 
So in fact, the device not support does not support the VK KHR because they don't have the drivers enabled. If you have the drivers enabled with Vulkan, you should be able to work with that. I'll post uh, a sample command here down below in the description. Another cool thing that has been introduced is the support for the raw caption with time that, uh, as uh, this uh, suggests, it is a form a native to CC extractor. That is the software, so it that uh, uh, lets you extract subtitles out of videos, and it's fine because it also has, as far as I see, I never heard of it. So it's uh, something new I discovered today. Uh, okay, uh, the uh, synchronization with the audio and uh, the uh, subtitle. So it lets you highlight the subtitle as soon as uh, it's going. So it's rather cool. And uh, I think it's another feature that is uh, uh, implemented in FMPAC that is rather cool and can be used in the future. Okay, and uh, that is all regarding the new version of FMPAC 7.1 uh, beta. And uh, uh, there's a ton of new codecs and uh, some of them, so I didn't have the possibility or didn't have the technicality to uh, try them all. So there are new codecs coming out all the way. And uh, these, I think, are the most important highlights that we can get out, out of this new version. There, is also, there are also very many other things. And for the moment, thank you very much for watching. If you like it, please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified about the next videos I'll be releasing. And for the moment, thank you very much and see you next time with other videos dealing with multimedia and also much, much, much more. Ciao, ciao.